Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Booz Allen Hamilton stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Booz Allen Hamilton Holding is the parent company of Booz Allen Hamilton Inc which is a management and information technology consulting firm. The company is headquartered in McLean, Virginia and was founded in 1914. It went public in 2010 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. It has 80 offices around the world. The company provides consulting, analysis, and engineering services to public and private companies as well as nonprofits. Edwin Booz founded the company based on his theory that companies would be more successful if they can get expert and impartial advice from someone outside the organization. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 11 billion market cap. They're trading at $79 a share and they have 138 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They have positive free cash flow each year and it's pretty consistent. The highest in 2020 at 423 million. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that grows each year, peaking at about half a billion dollars. Revenue is a sales for the company that also grows nicely from 5.8 billion to 7.5 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And their gross profit grows every year. Their highest is in 2020 at 4.1 billion. Below that is operating expenses, then operating income. When you look at the income statement, you should really focus on operating income. Below operating income is the interest they pay in their debt. They're also paying more interest each year. It's at $95 million in 2020. Below that is other income and expenses, then pre-tax income, then their taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. The company seems to be growing a lot each year. They grew their net income from a quarter billion to half a billion. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. I feel operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income. And then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They've been spending more and more each year on CapEx from 54 million to 128 million. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they're at over $400 million of free cash flow. If a company has positive free cash flow, it makes it a lot easier for them to pay a dividend payment, which they do, or to buy back stock, pay down debt, or grow the business. It looks like they're buying back a lot of stock each year, 46 million in 2017, then 270 million, 250 million, and 180 million. When a company buys back stock, this decreases the shares outstanding making your shares more valuable. It doesn't look like they added much debt in 2017, 18, and 19. But in 2020, they issued 500 million of debt and paid down 77 million. So they added more than 400 million dollars of debt in 2020. Let's look at the capital structure. $1 billion of equity, $2.7 billion of debt. Their 28% equity, 72% debt. And their net debt is 1.4 billion. Their WAC is 7.1%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $12.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $10.9 billion. We divide that by 138 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 7903. They're trading at 7867. My valuation is pretty much what they're trading at. 
I think this is the closest my model has ever been to a company stock. Simply Wall Street values them at $65, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. This is the stock price the last five years, and for a while it was only going up it looks like. It took a little dip back in March, but it came right back up way past its all time high. The stock is retreating the past few weeks. It looks like the company raises a dividend each year. They pay a 1.9% dividend yield. They pay out 42% of their net income and 48% of their free cash flow. They have a beta of 0.76, so the stock is not volatile. It moves less than the market. The stock has gone up 4.2% in the past 52 weeks, which is much worse than the S&P 500, which went up 26% in the same time frame. The 52 week low was 54, the high was 100. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. So it seems to be on a downtrend. About one to two million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 138 million shares outstanding, 135 million are on float. 93% are held by institutions and under 2% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be pretty happy because you'd be at $100,000 today. That's a 26% annual return. The top shareholder is T. Rowe Price at 11%, then Vanguard, BlackRock, JP Morgan, and State Street. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market's 9, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 22.4, so investors are paying $22 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 1.5, which is better than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 10.1. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 1.1 billion of equity, negative 800 million of tangible equity, because they have 1.9 billion of intangibles on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments seven and a half times. ROE is net income over equity. They have a great ROE at 45%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities two times. Their current assets are 1.3 billion of cash and 1.4 billion of receivables. The company appears well capitalized. They had 400 million of free cash flow, 1.4 billion of working capital, and a $200 million dividend payment. So they have $1.6 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. The only other company I did in the same industry as Booz Allen was Franklin Covey. Booz Allen is doing better in P.E. because they're positive, Franklin's negative. Franklin Covey is doing better in price to sales and price to book. They're both doing well in current ratio. Booz Allen is doing much better in ROE. Franklin Covey is doing better in debt. But Booz Allen is a much bigger company at $10.8 billion. Franklin Covey is only $367 million. So to summarize, I have them trading at intrinsic value. This company has been around a really long time. And consulting services are one of those things that are always going to be around because a lot of companies are inefficient and they need people to help them out. All businesses can use their services as long as the consulting service can justify the value by bringing in more profits or reducing the company's expenses. Then the cost of paying a consultant justifies their service. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10 and the ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.